We'll try to receive the ball. It'll be second and ten. And just to remind everyone what's at stake in this game a little bit more in depth. Remember, everyone that's made it here has already guaranteed themselves 15,000, right? Winner of this game, you get to the final four, you get yourself another 20. All right, guys, the dreaded gun tight. I know you guys are maybe sick of this coverage. Maybe you guys got something that's good with dealing with it. I primarily, my number one coverage for playing against this have been cover nine, but I ran into a uh, coverage that I think is even better than cover nine. I've been having absolutely no trouble dealing with this formation since I switched over. Uh, mainly what you really want to look at is what they're trying to accomplish. I mean, if you look at what people try to do when they're in this formation, look at where they are trying to attack, right? Outside, 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 right? Outside. And then they have a mesh uh, type concept that they can throw in there, right? If you notice, their mode of attack is trying to get to the outside of your defense, to break the outside of your coverage. And Madden is, to me, it seems it's more designed to try to take away inside breaking routes when you're playing like double high against those defenses. Um, and then a lot of times the player on the outside who's supposed to maintain outside leverage plays horribly, right? So we kind of got to come up with a, a solution for this problem. So my number one thing whenever I think about how to deal with a problem is I try to think of how would a professional team approach defending a formation like this. And I searched for, I don't know, a year and a half and some change to try to find a playbook or something that kind of gets into it. And I always had a hard time finding it. And I finally ran across a couple of uh, playbooks that go into how they deal with this. So let's take a look. So this is a page from, I believe it's the Georgia Bulldogs playbook. And this is how, this is my method of action. When I run into a problem, um, you know, I, I try to figure out ways to solve that problem. But I always want to know what a professional team does. They're way more experienced. They understand things, um, especially the more complicated aspects of football, right? They have a better understanding in, in how to deal with specific problems, okay? So I've been looking for stuff like this for years, I think, in regards to how teams play stack sets. And I finally ran into a couple of pages and some playbooks from Fangio and, and obviously this playbook. And we get a, a real good grip on what they're trying to accomplish. So this is their stack adjustments versus middle of the field closed zone coverage. So like your cover three or your cover one. At least this is what I'm assuming based upon what I read here, okay? So we have Zorro, Zulu, and Zebra. Don't get tied too much into the verbiage. It's more so about the assignments and what they're trying to accomplish. Now, Zorro is what you would be like your standard cover three in the game of Madden. You call cover three, this is basically what how I see it. But they still play it a lot more efficiently as opposed to Madden. So as you see, the curl flat player... Notice, you know, this is what I'm trying to get at. You know, I'm not trying to be overcomplicated, but this is more so, I think, would be the launching point to kind of seeing things from a different light, right? The biggest thing I notice from what I'm about to show you with these two pages is how they're trying to leverage the outside of the formation, okay? I think they're playing this type of leverage due to where their help is that's what football is all about leverage space play into your help in regards to defense with the middle of the field closed deep middle safety or maybe a rat in the hole, you're helpless to the inside. And with a formation like this, with divider rules, right? These guys are definitely inside the divider. So we just play outside of the formation and force everything inside. So you gotta come on the field with like this mode or this, uh, I don't know, the rule, the number one rule you have, at least when I play this defense is, I am not going to allow anything to the outside. And that's primarily what they're trying to attack with this formation, right? So it kind of opened up my eyes, right? So one thing that Madden has wrong, okay, first of all, pay attention to the alignment of this curl flat. Notice he's outside leverage of this player. That will play a big part in what I show you after this. Okay, but look at the deep third player, right? Play your third outside leverage on the vertical, okay? So... You know, he's your outer third, and he's running a corner route, and he has superior leverage on that route. But look on the flip side of this, okay? Notice how when both routes go inside, 
Madden would have this guy drift off into space. And I went over this in a previous video. Hopefully I find it and leave a link. Uh, when I play cover three against formations like this, at least I was on the right track, right? I would user the corner and I would, when I would see something like this, I would squeeze on these routes as opposed to just playing outer third because I thought it was useless for him to be playing in space, right? And here we see an actual professional team kind of showcasing that same logic, right? doesn't make sense for a player to drift off into space. You want to find work, right? So with a route combination like this, why not squeeze down on it knowing that nothing is threatening up the field, right? So enough about that. We can look at Zulu and Zebra coverage. So you know, I tried to simulate this in Madden. They don't have it in the game. Okay, so, you know, real quickly, we can take a look at it. It's really like a lot of match type principles. So like you see the corner, again, outside leverage pre-snap. Look how he's outside leverage pre-snap. Get all these players outside leverage here, right? Corner. If number one stays number one, if he goes out or up, he stays on number one. So if you were to call cover three with this type of Zulu check in it, the play art would showcase them playing, you know, cover three, but they would match like this, right? He wouldn't drift off into space. One goes out, so he takes that route. And it makes sense because he has outside leverage on that route, so he could play that route a lot better. Now, you may think, well, what about the number two? If he were to run out and take the corner, well, then no one would be outside for this deep route. Well, no, because the seam flat player is matching the number two on the vertical patterns. It's almost like cover three match, but against this formation. But for whatever reason, Madden doesn't have this in the game, okay? So it's just really frustrating, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's just really frustrating because these are tools that, you know, defensive coordinators put in their toolbox to solve different problems right and madden is supposed to simulate the game of football and these simple checks just are not in the game zebra i believe is more so of a blitz with a cover three shell and they have the rules here okay so let's move on to the next one okay so this is where i believe if you were to call like a middle of the field closed man type defense so like cover one man Okay, these are the stack adjustments that they would have built into the play, right? So they have lock and level, halo, and tango. Now, these are not in the game, okay? Trust me, I checked, tried to figure out a way to simulate it. It's just not in the game, okay? So it is what it is. But they do have lock and level in the game. Now, lock and level, as you see, is where the defenders play at different levels in the defense. Because you're in man coverage. You know, if we were on the same level and these guys run switch routes like this... We could potentially run into each other and then this would be a disaster to the outside okay so at different levels you know we kind of guarantee that we won't run into each other if they were to run something like that okay so that makes sense but also pay attention to the leverage again very important okay this is what i'm trying to drive home because to me it seems as a middle of the field closed defense you're playing to your help okay and when you think about divider rules because they're inside the divider you want to play with proper leverage to where your help is okay so halo as you see here you can read these rules okay uh tango i like this really well because these guys are playing at the same level so to speak okay but it's more of like an inside outside deal so i'm going to take the first inside you take the guy to the outside so if they were to run like something like this i would have superior leverage on this and you would have superior leverage on that right now you know one of the ways you can attack that obviously is i go inside so i take this guy but i go inside as well because now you have to take the second inside but that's not a big deal with this defense because the help is to the inside right so everything plays in unison all right guys so four two two zero two zone this is two man Okay, and then we got cover three and cover one, single high side, double high side. You guys know that I am a double high guy. I love sitting in double high for a wide variety of different reasons. And, you know, I almost never play single high. And lo and behold, the answer to the problem I was trying to solve, um, as far as taking away the outside, is single high. So it, it has its place in regards to uh, what I like to do. And... If you think about it, think about single high. I made a video on cover one. If you haven't watched it, you know, there are divider rules that Nick Saban, I believe he came up with this idea where when you're playing cover one, if you're a corner and man to man coverage out here, okay, you would think that he's supposed to play with outside leverage because he has help inside, but it's the flip side of that. He should play with inside leverage. 
everything's relative to the divider rule. And the reason why is because with outside leverage, if this guy runs a slant, a skinny post, even a regular post, right? It's not like the safety will be able to help out uh, efficiently on that route, right? It's just too much ground for him to cover. Remember, he's really kind of inside the numbers. So you really want to play more so towards your help, which would be the sideline, right? But if you're inside the divider line, that's where you play with outside leverage because you have help to the inside, whether it be a rat, a hole player, etc. What if you think about this formation, the entire formation is inside the divider, right? And if you're trying to break outside, why don't we take away the outside and force you to have to work inside to where it's more condensed, right? It just makes so much sense when you think about it. So that's where cover three and cover one is kind of supreme, right? Because we can play those coverages and play with outside leverage and then have help to the inside where you're, um, you're, you know, it's really your secondary focus, not your primary focus with the route concepts that you have dialed up. So, so, you know, you may look at this and say, well, this isn't single high, right? There's not a deep middle safety. Well, that's because we're playing a different form of cover three. So we're not playing cover three sky. Okay. Um, and you may think it's cover three buzz, but it's not cover three buzz either, either, right? Cover three buzz, it gives you a too high look. And then one of the safeties rotate down into the true like cover three coverage. And against certain sets, we can match it and et cetera. This is actually cover three cloud. And I like this the most against this formation. So this guy's playing the flat. He's the outer third. So we are rolling the coverage, right? He's the outer piece of the coverage on this side, the outer third, okay? This is the curl flat, hook to curl, hook to curl, okay? Now I want you to watch what happens. We're gonna run a little out here. I think he's running a corner. He's running up the field. I forgot the name of this play. Okay, watch that out over there and watch how he gets open. Isn't that a problem, right? That's a problem right away. And the next problem is look at this seam pattern here, right? If I pause it right here, this guy's playing a little bit more so in the window here, so this isn't a big problem, but the seam window here is just way too open for a quick throw. All right, so our inside defenders have to play a lot more efficient in regards to cushioning the seam, okay? So really quickly, we just make two adjustments. So watch what I do here. Remember in Zulu and Zorro and Zebra, remember the whole, the whole point of me showing you that, well, obviously, so you can see how a you know, professional team would play a formation like this under single high, but it was really about how they're trying to maintain leverage on this formation and maintaining outside leverage, right? So how about we just take this curl flat player and move them outside and you'll see how drastically different the defense plays. And then to solve the other problem, now we know who to use her. We're just going to use it this player. And we solve both of those problems right there. So our rule as this player is we're just going to cushion the number two. If he runs up into the seam, then we cushion that route and until uh, we're satisfied with him being handed off to the safety. Okay, if a route combination were to go like this, okay, then, you know, we can kind of squeeze that, but then we really want to get in the window of the seam because we don't want a seam throw. So you can draw up a number of different route combinations here, pushing the seam until we hand it off and then we can come down and help out inside, etc. Now let's take a look at this outside breaking route. And it's the same play called on both sides of the ball and look at how drastically different this is. Is it open? Absolutely not. You throw that, that's a pick six. Okay, this corner route, is that open? No, he's pretty much viced on this side of the ball. Okay, the seam, that's us. So we take that away. And this guy is pretty much apex in both of these routes. I would kind of like him a little bit up, but no big deal there. I'll show it again one more time, and then hopefully I'll get to some game action. But as you see, you know, we are geared to taking away these outside breaking patterns and force the user to have to work inside where they're not really comfortable doing so. And then that's where we are as a user. We can do a lot of different things to help out. And I've been getting interceptions galore shutting down this formation since I've been using, utilizing this concept. And I hope you guys start implementing this into your defense as well. So one more problem, I, I like to think ahead, okay? So with me moving hook curl further this way because I'm afraid of a rip throw to the seam and me cushioning this seam, a potential problem is running this way, right? We get like an inside zone that could peel off, right? Get a decent run, 
Or if they play action and I bite on the run fit because I'm responsible for this A-gap, well now the seam is wide open for a throw. So I kind of want to relieve the pressure and the run. So what I do is I shift the defensive line in that direction. Okay, and it puts this guy in the gap that I'm responsible for, but he's still responsible for this gap. So he's going to shift here, but post-snap he's going to scrape towards the tight end side to this gap, right? So it kind of relieves some pressure for us in the run game. Or you can shift them. I think I shifted them as well, right? So you can change the run fits if you see fit. Depends on what your opponent is running, right? If he's running a lot of counter stuff, then you can keep it the way I had. Or if he's running a lot of inside zone type of deal, you can shift them this way. And I want you to watch. Obviously, we have a star player here. He rips up two guys on inside zone, and he's able to put an end to that. But you see, even if he wasn't, you have like a regular player here, you know, you would get a double team, and then these guys would be able to scrape and make a play. Obviously, this would be us. Okay, but I know you guys aren't too concerned with the run. Okay, deuce close. To me, this is more of a tight formation, right? So I started calling Cloud against this formation as well, and the idea is the same because if you think about it, they've squeezed everyone down in between the dividers, right? So how about we maintain outside leverage because you're probably trying to break out, right? And then we just have help to the inside. It's the same idea. I want you to watch. I think he threw, he tried to throw a corner pattern. There it is. But this guy isn't playing inside, right? He overtakes the route to the outside. Interception. Okay. Uh-oh. Gun tight, right? That's why I'm like, you know what? Let me go to my guy here, right? Move him outside. I didn't, okay, I made the shift, and I'm ready to go. I try cushion the seam, picked up something that coming, that's coming from the front side over there, interception. And we can go back and look and see if anything. Yeah, he could have made this throw out here, but again, that would have had to have been almost like a perfect throw. Cushion this long enough where he can drive on the ball. And again, we just picked that guy off. Don't remember if I scored. I didn't. So primarily I would play cover nine against this formation, but it's good to have a lot of different types of defenses that you can play against a particular problem so they can never key on what you're playing and then you have a variety of different ways to play something. So again, this is gun tight, move him outside, made my shift, cushion the seam, drive on that route, Interception. So when I started utilizing this, man, I was getting excited because I'm like, man, I'm solving a lot of problems with this defense. Um, I just love the way it contains everything inside. Okay, again, tight formation, ate my adjustment, cushion the seam there. Look at him throw that corner. It's not there. Right? So he was running this little concept here. But look how we are outside of that throw. It's just not going to happen. Now, you may say, well, what if this guy were to run up the seam, right? Because he's outside. Well, that's where we have our help, right? Everything's about playing to your help. Right? And I think a lot of the other defenses in the game under double high, it plays more so to inside leverage with the safeties against those quarter routes, and that's just a no-go. Okay, another tight type formation. I'm in my play. I should have motioned this guy. I should have moved him outside. I didn't do that. I think this was early on when I started playing this defense. Okay, so right here, I don't have to cushion the seam. Everyone's breaking out, right? So now you're kind of just looking for work, right? You can do a number of different things, but let's just pay attention to what happens. Is that out open? No. Is he open? No. Is he open? It's just no one open. You can't run this concept. So he pauses and he just throws this route here because that's the only place he could go. 
and we get an interception. So I'll leave it at that. I hope uh, this kind of provided some insight. It's more so about concepts. It's not like I just want to throw you a play to use and, hey, this is the play, guys, use this. I kind of want to, I like for people to kind of like think, right? So again, the whole ordeal is they're condensing the formation and they're trying to branch out. So we just take away what they're trying to do. If you're trying to branch out, we're just going to take away the outside. We're going to leverage everything to the outside, force you inside. And that's how we can play the, the formation a lot better. Now, obviously, you'll run into problems, right? You'll run into specific problems. Maybe guys will start adjusting, running a lot more routes inside. But after, you know, after some time in the defense, you can obviously make adjustments. You can always, obviously trap them. And then that's when you can probably incorporate a lot more double high defenses, right? And that's the beauty of this defense. It looks the same, right? It looks like double high pre-snap, right? So we could be playing cover four quarters. We could be playing palms. We could be playing cover nine. We could be playing cover six, right? But lo and behold, we're actually playing cover three cloud, right? So we can, the second they start getting away from outside breaking routes and they stubbornly want to stay in this formation and start running his stuff inside, well, then that's when you can start switching over to, um, you know, other shell coverages to put a stop to what they're doing, make adjustments and do what you got to do. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. I hope you guys got some insight to this and uh, maybe I'll drop a video where I just go over full plays of me playing this, this type of defense against this formation. All right, guys, peace.